welcome back uh, to the course on blockchain. Uh, so, the, in the last uh, two lectures, uh, we have looked into different use cases of uh, blockchain usage for government applications. Uh, so, we have broadly looked into various government applications where blockchain can be utilized. Uh, so, in the next uh, couple of lectures, we will uh, broadly look into three different use cases in details. Uh, where we look into that how different companies, startups or uh, different project proposals, uh, they are utilizing this blockchain technology for developing application for government usage. Uh, so, we will primarily look into three different aspects. The first one is uh, using blockchain for digital identity. The second one is uh, using blockchain for taxation. And uh, the third one is using blockchain for land registry record management. So, let us, uh, let us start with uh, our discussion uh, on blockchain usage in government, where we look into that uh, how the blockchain technology can be utilized for the digital identity management. Uh, so, in one of our earlier lectures, we were looking into uh, that uh, how blockchain can be widely utilized for uh, digital identity management. Here we look into some specific use cases and uh, what we have seen that digital identity that is uh, something uh, debatable, uh, debatable concept like uh, how you can utilize or what type of attribute or parameter can be utilized to identify one's identity and the different privacy concept or the privacy concern which are associated with your identity. So, uh, in case of digital identity that uh, people they are known by their identities, uh, this identity can be different for business applications and for the social applications. So, uh, for a particular business people can use one particular uh, form of identity to uh, to express himself or to express herself. Whereas, for several other social interactions, uh, other identities like the nickname or that kind of attributes can be utilized for uh, identifier uh, people. So, if you, if you broadly look into these aspects of identity from different domains, uh, say whenever you are going for uh, a foreign trip, uh, you need to have a custom clearance at the airport uh, during that time uh, your passport is your identity. On the other hand, whenever you are interacting with your friends over say Facebook or this kind of social networking platform, during that time your name, your nickname, your profile picture, this constitutes your identity. Now, uh, that way if you look into this identity concept, this identity is a collection of various attributes ranging from the name of the person, uh, the age of the person, say for a banking transactions your financial history can be used as an your identity, your work history can be used as an identity for your uh, employment purpose, your address history can be a part of your identity say whenever you are applying for certain government services, your social history can be your identity whenever uh, you are interacting over a social networking platform. Uh, so, from this uh, white concept, uh, let us uh, look into the uh, aspects of digital identity or why digital identity or preserving digital identity is important. Uh, in general, uh, for different kind of applications where we utilize this concept of identity nowadays, uh, the individuals they do not have any control over the information that uh, comprise their identities. So, uh, different applications or different platforms can utilize uh, different types of attributes to identify yourself or identify an individual. Uh, so, for example, as I have mentioned that whenever you are uh, moving to a foreign country and you need to pass through the custom clearance, uh, during that time uh, your passport is your identity and whenever you are in a foreign land, during that time your passport and your visa is your identity. On the other hand, uh, the concept of identity is completely different whenever you are in a social platform. During that time, people identify yourself by looking into your social networking profile. 
by looking into your name attribute with uh, whom you have uh, interacted, uh, what are your different posts in your social networking platform. So, all these different concepts together they constitute the identity, but the message that I want to convey at this part that as an individual you do not have any control over this particular digital identity architecture that which attributes will uniquely identify you. So, because of this uh, we observe there are different kind of identity fraud uh, where the users do not have any uh, particular visibility on identity attributes. So, the identity fraud can come from authorization perspective, uh, the identity fraud can come from authorization perspective where uh, a false person or a uh, intruder can get, can get authorized as a, a normal person because of this identity fraud. Uh, for authentication purpose, the identity fraud can be utilized where um, you a false person can get authenticated to a server uh, if they are able to access your identity. So, say for example, uh, uh, in a social networking platform sometime it happened that uh, your uh, some attacker or some intruder uh, tries to impersonate one uh, profile and in that case they create a same profile uh, with the name and possibly by stealing the profile picture from someone else and uh, impersonate that person to create a false or fake Facebook profile uh, and in that case this kind of authentication problem comes into picture that uh, the other persons in the social networking platform they do not have any control or uh, it is difficult for them to find out whether this particular social networking profile is a uh, original profile or is a fake profile. So, nowadays uh, you see many such news or many such concern regarding uh, this identity fraud due to uh, impersonification attack or this kind of authentication attack kind of problem. And similarly, the verification purpose where uh, the environment becomes difficult to verify uh, the original identity of a person. So, uh, as uh, I have mentioned that your identity data is typically decentralized. So, different uh, organization they make different control of your uh, passport uh, different control of your identity data. Say for example, in a custom environment you have your passport which is utilized as an identity data. Say whenever you are on road and you are driving a car during that time your driving uh, license become your identity. Uh, say whenever you are going to a bank uh, in that bank your bank passbook becomes your identity. Uh, now, for some social networking services your other card be may become your identity. Uh, whenever you are going for participating in a general election during that time your voter card can become your identity. Now, that way uh, for the same person different organization imposes different form of identity and they maintain their own identity database. So, that way uh, this identity data is typically decentralized and it is managed by multiple authoritative domains, but many of the times it may happen that you need to prove your identity uh, through the identity information that was provided by a separate organization. So, for example, whenever you are going to a bank to open a new account, uh, during that time you have to give your identity proof and uh, during that time you can form, um, you can fill up the form called the KYC or know your customer form where uh, you have to provide your details and at the same time some kind of identity proof. Uh, so, during that time you may provide your passport as an identity proof, you may provide your driving license as an identity proof. So, any kind of photo identity card can work as identity proof. That way uh, the multiple organizations uh, need to transfer the identity information from one place or one organization to another organization and those organization need to verify the identity information. Uh, for authenticate or uh, for authorizing a person to uh, provide some kind of services. So, uh, from this concept of having problem with uh, your physical identity where you need to maintain multiple identity cards or multiple identity certificates. Uh, so, we are gradually moving towards the domain called uh, digital identity in the domain of digital identity uh, what is named as a single sign on. 
So a single signed on is something like that where you have one identity information and that identity information can be utilized to get services from uh, multiple partners or multiple organization. So the single identity is utilized for uh, various purposes. So in that case you do not need to maintain multiple identity documents. So the same identity that can be utilized to obtain the services from uh, multiple uh, service organizations. So, this concept is known as a single sign on or SSO. Now, the concept of SSO is uh, although in a physical environment we do not use uh, this SSO till now at least in India, uh, we are trying to utilize that by the means of Aadhaar card or that type of uh, identity certificate, but uh, it is already widely conceptualized in the software industry. So, it is just like that you have a single password and using that single password you can access multiple services. So, uh, you have you have multiple service providers uh, or multiple vendors. Uh, so, using that single sign on um, identity element you can uh, you can be able to log into multiple services. So, one typical example can be uh, come from your uh, Google user ID and password. So, possibly you have seen that uh, using your Google uh, email ID and the password you can get services from uh, multiple service providers at least for the services which are provided by Google or which are provided by um, uh, Google associated services like YouTube, uh, Google Drive, different kind of Google Forms, uh, all these uh, Google provided services and at the same time uh, some third party services can also be uh, uh, also be uh, utilized or where you can get the authorization by utilizing your Google ID and the password. So, in that case uh, you can utilize the Google your Google login uh, to make a login to that particular service portal where that service portal get your ID verified from uh, Google and they get your certain information with your consent from Google. So, this is this is, go, is a kind of example of a single sign on or SSO where you have a single identity or a single user ID and password uh, that can be utilized for getting multiple uh, services. Uh, now, let us look into that uh, how this SSO and decentralization uh, can be can become a trouble for managing one's identity. So, here uh, you have your identity in the identity database. So, the record keeping agency like uh, the Aadhaar uh, Center UIDI, they are maintaining your uh, identity data. Uh, now, uh, whenever you are going to bank or post office to getting certain services, during that time you are subscribing with your um, uh, Aadhaar data and bank and post office, they will get it validated from this. Uh, record keeping agency. So, they will they will get it validated from the other database that whatever document you are submitting to them, uh, that document is indeed correct document uh, which will be uh, able uh, to get you authenticated for uh, obtaining the service. Similarly, whenever you are applying for some mobile SIM card, the mobile company may ask for your identity card like your other card and uh, from your other card they may get. Uh, verify it or get authenticated uh, you uh, to find out that well you are a citizen of India and you are authorized to get a Indian SIM card. Similarly, the public sector services, uh, so we have seen like uh, various public sector services nowadays it utilizes the other card concept. Uh, so, this uh, public sector services whenever you want to obtain certain service, uh, you, you uh, submit a copy of your other card which provides your identity. So, that uh, service agency they get it again verified from the UIGI. So, uh, in, in general what is happening here that the, your other data or your identity data that is getting decentralized into multiple hand into multiple authoritative domain or authorization domain where everyone gets it verified individually. Now, ideally what is happening the same copy of the identity data is getting distributed among multiple uh, authoritative domain or multiple authorization domain. And when it happens during that time the possibility of identity fraud uh, becomes uh, more, uh, more uh, severe. Uh, where there will be a high possibility that certain kind of identity fraud uh, would be there. So, it may happen that well uh, your uh, record keeping agency is not revealing your identity data, the uh, identity data is not uh, getting tampered or not getting um, accessed from the record keeping agency rather uh, the third party organizations which are keeping a copy of your identity data 
from there the information can get revealed or can get public. Uh, so, that way uh, your identity information which we normally consider as a private information or uh, uh, that that may get uh, uh, get public or that may get revealed uh, in the open and uh, which which may increase the possibility of identity fraud for uh, several aspects. So, uh, in the concept of uh, this digital identity management, uh, there are two fundamental principles that uh, we will talk about. One is called the self sovereign identity and the second one is called the distributed trust, trust model. Uh, so, let us look first look into this concept of self sovereign identity. So, the concept of self sovereign identity, it is utilized to uh, provide privacy control uh, to the identity data. Uh, of individuals. Uh, so, the self sovereign identity says that uh, individuals should have full control and ownership of their identity information. Uh, so, it is just like that uh, whatever identity information you are revealing to public uh, as, uh, as it is your private information. So, uh, you are the only person who will manage this entire information. So, it is not not like the way we use today, the example that I had given earlier that um, uh, individuals do not have any control over their identity attributes. So, the self sovereign identity directly attack this principle or uh, directly counter this principle saying that well uh, to make a privacy control over the identity information, individuals should have full control over uh, their identity information and they will have the ownership of their identity information. So, they would be the person to uh, say to others that see uh, to verify me you can utilize this part of your or this set of attributes of my identity information for a different service they may uh, authorize other person to use another set of identity attributes from the entire identity database. Uh, so, uh, the first principle is that uh, individual should have control and ownership. The second is the individual can control the usage of their own identity profile. So, uh, here we, we say it is like a, a consent or the agreement for information usage where uh, the individual should uh, say uh, that well this part of my identity information can be utilized for a social interaction for a Facebook, uh, but this part of my identity information should not be revealed to one. Uh, service agency or one third party agency. So, uh, individuals can say that well whenever I am providing my passport information to one uh, user for verification, I can only provide this part of the passport information just like my photo and the name. I will not uh, provide my address, mobile number and all these details to this particular uh, organization or this particular agency for verifying me. So, uh, this particular concept where the user can give access to different attributes to different users or different author, um, different uh, authoritative domains or agencies to uh, identify uh, one user or for identification purpose or for authorization purpose uh, that particular concept we call is at a, as a sole sovereign identity. But uh, as you as you understand that this is going to be a burden to the user like now the user need to manage their own identity profile and they have to uh, selectively say that well this part of my identity attribute can be utilized for getting service A, whereas uh, another part of my identity information can be utilized to get uh, service B. So, user need to control that what part of the identity information can get revealed or can get um, verified by this third person uh, or third party agencies. So, uh, it seems like a burden, but uh, with the help of blockchain we can solve this, we will come that how we can do that. Uh, the next part uh, is uh, the distributed trust model. So, the distributed trust model says that whenever your identity information is going to multiple vendors or multiple agencies, uh, they have certain access to your identity profile for different purpose. But these individuals or this agency should agree on the usage of the identity attribute. So, uh, it is just like that whenever you are providing your uh, copy of the passport to an agency for verifying your uh, identity say uh, that agency will not reveal your information to any other. Uh, one, one example uh, can be like uh, say you are you are going to uh, some places uh, for a for spend, uh, for uh, having your holiday trip. Uh, so, whenever you are going to that place you have booked a hotel. 
So, whenever you are making a check in to your hotel, the hotel person will ask for your identity card, uh, photo identity card. Now, whenever you are providing your photo identity card to that um, uh, hostel, uh, that uh, hotel authority, uh, you have a kind of trust relationship with that hotel authority that that hotel authority is not going to reveal that information to any other agency for any purpose. Uh, so, this kind of identity fraud uh, nowadays we have seen a lot recently we had this Facebook identity fraud where the Facebook data was uh, shared with Cambridge Analytica and Cambridge Analytica used that identity information for controlling uh, many of the uh, aspects, global aspects including elections at certain countries. So, this kind of debates are coming up. Now, all this identity fraud can be prevented so if we can set up a kind of trust model uh, among individuals who are going to have access over this identity data. Uh, so, uh, whenever you are providing your identity information to a third person, so the third person will not be able to reveal that information to any other person. Uh, and uh, in that case, if they are going to reveal it as an individual or as an authority or as an owner of that identity information, you will get notified that your information is going to send to some third party and even before sending it to some third party, a consent will be taken from you. Uh, so, every identity attribute uh, may not be accessible to all. So, that is why uh, this distributed trust model uh, ensures that uh, your identity information without your consent that is not going to reveal from uh, to any third party other than the ones with whom you have agreed to share the information. Well, now let us see uh, with this kind of uh, identity problem which are coming because of uh, this uh, identity management problem and the second one is this distributed trust model that uh, how blockchain can help us in identity management. So, first of all what blockchain can provide us, blockchain can provide us a way of user centric design. So, that was the first problem of uh, our life like um, whenever as an individual you are going to manage your identity attribute during that time it becomes a burden for you. Now, the blockchain can actually uh, make it easy to manage this entire digital identity. So, uh, with this user centric design the user can give first the consent for identity usage and the second one is the control for identity attributes and identity profile. So, this consent and control are the two important terms that comes in this uh, user centric design principle where as an end user uh, you can give consent that your identity information would be utilized for this many purposes whereas uh, the control says that well uh, you will have a control that which part of your identity attributes uh, or which part of your identity profile will be shared uh, for the authorization purpose. Uh, that is the first uh, advantage of utilized blockchain for digital identity management. I will come to a use case to express this in further details. The second one is the uh, automated and real time verification of the identity through smart contracts. So, it is just like that for identity verification you have written certain small code in the form of a smart contract. So, the smart contract get can get automatically executed and can, um, uh, can verify your identity without actually revealing the identity attributes. Say one typical example can be like um, for your other data, say a mobile agency can uh, wants to verify your other data, verify your identity with the help of other data. So, what the mobile agency can do that um, the mobile agency can set up a smart contract with you and that smart contract will uh, have access of your uh, identity attributes your say other number and uh, certain other biometric data and uh, this mobile uh, that, that particular smart contract uh, it, the code can be written in such a way so that the data which is being provided to the smart contract it is getting obfuscated. So, the data obfuscation means that uh, you are providing the data in a hidden form and uh, the third parties like that mobile companies they will not get actual access to the data. So, the smart contract in that way they can get a obfuscated copy of your data and get it automated automatically verified from your uh, other agency or the UIDI and then only send the yes no response to the mobile company saying that whether the identity got verified or whether the identity was not uh, got verified. Uh, so, that way 
the smart contract with the help of a smart contract you can hide your identity data you do not need to provide a photo identity card to the mobile company or do not need to upload your uh, other data to the mobile company rather the smart contract can automatically fetch your uh, identity data from your mobile phone based on your consent and uh, it can execute certain codes to obfuscate the data and then uh, provide the data to uh, some third persons. And the third one is that the uh, uh, advantage of blockchain uh, is that no one will be able to tamper with the identity information of individuals. So, what um, identity information you are providing uh, that particular identity information uh, whichever is there in your uh, blockchain data that information uh, no one will be able to tamper because blockchain ensures this tamper proof uh, way of keeping the records or keeping the transactions and that also becomes auditable because uh, you can see from the blockchain that uh, how your identity data got accessed by multiple vendors. So, whenever multiple vendors or multiple agencies are going to access your uh, blockchain data. Uh, so, uh, going to access your identity data via the blockchain a transaction record is put into the blockchain and then by looking into those transactions record as an individual you will be able to uh, find out that how your identity data was actually utilized for multiple purpose. So, if someone is sending your identity data to some third person first of all you will be able to prevent it by the by utilizing certain smart contracts which will have the uh, code for preventing data unnecessary leakage of data to the third parties. And uh, the second thing is that even if uh, s uh, there is no smart contract and uh, only the access log is put into the blockchain by looking into the access log you will be able to find out that uh, if you have shared your identity data with a uh, hotel management whether that hotel management has shared that data further with any other third parties or not. So, that way the blockchain can help us um, to have the manage of identity data in these three aspects the user centric design, the automated and the real time verification of the identity through the smart contracts and the third one is uh, that uh, providing a tamper proof auditable environment where no one will be able to tamper with the data, but uh, the data is available in the form of transaction over blockchain through which you will be able to verify as an individual that how your data has been utilized uh, for um, or how your data has been shared uh, in the among among multiple uh, agencies or multiple domains. Well, uh, so uh, that is uh, the broad idea about uh, the problem of digital identity and uh, how digital identity can be uh, or, or what is the advantage of blockchain to um, manage digital identity. Uh, so, in the next class we will look into one example of this which we call as a hyperledger indie which is a fork or which is a, a project under hyperledger platform. So, this hyperledger indie it provides a distributed ledger platform uh, for decentralized identity management. Uh, so, in the next class we will look uh, into details that how hyperledger indie uh, can be utilized to uh, have or uh, to manage your digital identity. Uh, with the help of this uh, blockchain or with the help of this uh, distributed ledger platform. Uh, so, uh, see you all in the next classes. Thank you.